Hey friends, so I've been working on a mashup recently and I realized that I've never done a video specifically on how to import music into Ableton Live and sync it with Ableton's clock, whether that music is BPM based or not. Um, so let's just dive right into this. Everybody says that. It's such a funny. Let's just dive right in. All right. Uh, so I'm going to grab my music because, unfortunately, I can't use somebody else's. Um, that's all right. You'll, you'll, you'll live through it. <laughs> um, so I've just drag and dropped some audio into Ableton in session view. Now, it's important when you're just trying to import the audio and, you're, and you don't know what BPM it is and you're trying to sync it. Uh, that you use session view as opposed to arrangement view, even if you plan on using arrangement view to eventually edit the the, the arrangement and do all the fun stuff you're going to do. You need to use session view for this specific trick, right? Um, so the next thing you want to do is, is well, I mean, let's just go ahead and turn on warping. Um, I have Ableton set, I should say, real quick, uh, in the record warp launch tab in my preferences, I have Ableton set to not auto warp long samples. And I think it considers... Uh, this song, obviously, being five minutes long, a long sample, so it didn't warp it. Um, that's just a preference of mine. That's how I like it to behave. So the first thing I need to do, here's where, here's where we begin the, uh, the, the method. I, dra I drop the audio into Ableton, okay? And then, then I want to take this little playhead and I want to figure out what section of the song do I actually want to use. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and say this seems like a pretty clear section. Let's listen. So, now, I know this is not 120 beats per minute, um, but let's go ahead and figure out what tempo it is. And that's what this process is. This is BPM-based music, and a lot of, if you're using a lot of electronic music or dance music or anything like that, um, even pop music nowadays, a lot of it is recorded using a computer. So, by tap tempo, by using the tap tempo feature over here, you can identify what the BPM of the song is, okay? And this is, this is the first step in syncing with Ableton. So... I'm going to play this the audio and I'm going to tap tempo as the audio plays, right? And so as you can see, we were hovering around 142 beats per minute. If I if I use the tap tempo, it's going to uh, work out the tempo to the hundredth, okay? So in order to get whole numbers, you can either click on this and type in 142, or I can just click and drag, and drag it to 142, okay? So now, what another thing I can do is I can hit, when I turn on the warping button, what's going to happen is it's going to now adopt this new BPM to this song, okay? But this is not where I want the downbeat to be. The downbeat actually is right here. So what I can do is I can right-click on this. Notice that if I hover over any of these these little gray points, a little warp marker comes up. Well, what that is, is Ableton identifying what's known as transients. Transients are spikes in the audio. Uh, and what I can do is I can hover over this area. This is the downbeat I want. If I right click on it, you get this big set of options, right? One of them is set 1.1.1 here, okay? These, this is, uh, this is the, the bars of the song, right? So it, this means basically set the beginning of the song here. So when I click on this, You'll notice that now, even though there's there's information before this section, where I play this audio is going to be right on this downbeat. And so now we can turn on the clock and ensure that these are, in fact, in sync. Boom. And so uh, a little bit of housekeeping here. What's awesome about this is that, let's say the, the first clear downbeat of the song was here, but there was all kinds of fun uh, intro material in the song right? And you still want that all to be in sync. Well, all you have to do is just take this start time and pull it down, go backwards in time. All of this is still going to be right, okay? If, in fact, the entire song remains at 142 beats per minute, I should be able to, any of these grid markers here, see all these little grid markers here? Any of these should be right and synced. So let's just test that theory. Let's move over here to this kind of wind down section. Yep, exactly right. Let's go ahead and uh, move it to the end. And yeah, notice anywhere I go, even with this place with no beats. How about right here?
right? So everything is in tune, or I'm sorry, everything is now beat synced in this whole song, okay? So now that that's done, let's go ahead and do a second one. I'll do it a little bit faster. And this one's going to present a little bit more of a challenge, and I'll, I'll show you why. So now I'm going to uh, find the song, drag it, drop it into Ableton, okay? Now... Again, what what I can what I can do. What's really fun about this is, let's say there's a different section of this song that I I want to do. I can go ahead and move this this playhead around. Another thing that I can do is I can actually turn on warping right away, even though I don't know what the BPM is, just to get these little uh, warp markers to show up. Right? I just want them to show up so that I can go in here and find the downbeat that I want um, and make it one one one. So, right. So if I right click on here. Set 1.1.1 here, watch. So now it's it's that, but now I can turn off warping, okay? And now the playhead is right there on that downbeat. but And that's nice, and I'll show you why, okay? So the next thing I'm going to do, part of my method, is I'm going to play the song, and then I'm going to try to tap tempo in and figure out what the tempo is, right? Now, I'm, 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 what I wanted to do is I wanted to demonstrate something here. It's very difficult, in my opinion, with audio kind of under 90 beats per minute to tap the tempo in, especially for me. Maybe maybe you have better rhythm than me. I don't know. But it's, it's difficult for me to, to get the tap tempo accurate here. So in this case, instead of clicking slowly and trying to figure out what the, what the tap tempo is, I'm actually going to double time my, my clicking. It's okay for you to double time... Uh, Ableton's interpretation of a song. It doesn't matter because you can half it and double it and so on and so forth. And I'll show you that in a second, but I'm going to go ahead and play the song again. This time I'm going to double time my, my, my tap tempo. And sorry, if you don't know what double timing is me, I'm going to click it twice as fast. Okay, let's check it out. Looks like 167 is our winner, right? So, so just so you understand, it is a lot easier to to click quickly and click steadily. Uh, that's basically what I'm trying to say. If you click slowly and try to click steadily, drummers will tell you that some of the hardest things to do are to play extremely slow beats to a click track. It's just difficult to get that phrasing, right? So double clicking faster makes it easier. And you have more... Uh, another another thing is you're, you're putting in more data. You're helping the computer parse out the BPM of the song a little bit easier, right? So I've chose 167, and this is the section that I want. And since I've already got this kind of set, the downbeat set, if I just hit warp, uh, it's going to be exactly on there. The difference, however, is, is that obviously this is wrong because the song was set to 142, the segment BPM stuck there. So what I need to do is write 167 in the segment BPM and watch this grid. Boom. Perfect. Everything is exactly synced. So now I have these two different songs that are worked out with Ableton's clock. I'm going to go ahead and launch this song, even though this is 142 beats per minute here, it should still play with Ableton's clock being 167. It'll just sound fast. Right? It still works, and I can slow it down. Right? So it still works. So now that these songs are synced, anything I do with the clock, or anything I do with moving the playheads along the grid, or anything like that, that everything is going to work out perfectly. Okay? So let's get into some uh, some things that I would do potentially with a mashup. Okay? First thing, if I'm playing these tracks together, obviously I have to turn them both down. They're pretty loud. Another thing that, I, that I'd like to do is figure out maybe where I want to grab the audio from. Now that I am warped, I can move this along the grid, and I know that any place that this snaps to is still going to be synced with Ableton's clock. So I'm going to move it over here to this beatless area, right? Uh, let's just go ahead and, and isolate this beatless area that I want to use, and we'll take a listen. I'm going to move this back to 167 for now, Okay. And I'm going to turn this off. Let's go ahead and play this. So I'm, I'm going to use this section, okay? Because it, this is cool. This doesn't have a beat, and this other song does, okay? So what's rad about this is that I'm, even though I'm still in session view, this is the section that I want. Now that I've isolated this section with the, uh, the brackets, I can 
click on this and I can move it. I can just click and drag it over to the corner where I can choose between arrangement and session view. And I can just drop it into its respective track. Okay. So it's grayed out because it's still assuming that we're working in session view. But we could go ahead and hit this button here, which is the back to arrangement view and be able to see that, right? So, and as you can see, it's right there. Okay. So <clears throat> here with identity mitosis, this song, I need to find a beat section, okay? So uh, let's just go ahead and identify where we want that to be. I'm gonna pull this back down to its, its BPM as well just to make it easier to figure it out, okay? So let's just figure it out. So this is a pretty good section of this song where, yet again, we have a lot of beat action, but we don't have a lot of note action, okay? So this is a great combination uh, to, to try to mash up with the other song, right? So um, let's just choose the section that we want. It's just this little section right here, right? I'll just turn on loop just to have it go. I'm going to go over to this part. All right, so now I'm gonna grab this song and I'm gonna drag it over to the arrangement view, okay? So, now the next thing that I need to do is I can't just play these songs on top of each other even though they're beat synced. First of all, this song is a lot faster, okay? This song is a lot slower. If I play them at 142, this song's audio is gonna sound strange and out of place, okay? The next thing that I have to be concerned with is the fact that both of these songs are in different keys. Okay, this song happens to be, well, let's figure out what this, this is, this is the way that I would figure it out. Okay, I'm going to add a MIDI track, I'm going to grab an electric, and I'm going to play the song, and I'm just going to figure out what, what key it's in. Let's go ahead and listen. And I'll turn this up to its uh, original tempo, okay. And the way that I'm going to identify the key is I'm going to play this keyboard with it, and once I figure out what the key is, then I know what the key is, right? So I'm listening to this. So that's a B right there, a B, so we're in B minor, right? So that's what I figured this song is, and I'm just going to go ahead and label this. This is B minor, okay? So, and then on this track, I'm going to now listen to this and do the same thing. Play the keyboard with it and figure out what it's uh I'm going to figure out what its key is in. Okay, so I'm going to play this now and 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 notice that I'm turning off the other tracks, just this one. So that one is in D minor, okay? So now that I figure out what their keys are, this is B minor, this is D minor. This is in my opinion a pretty compatible situation. We have tracks that are not that far apart from each other, okay? Some other tracks might be more difficult to do this with. Um, what I can do is I can just go in here and I can say, all right, so if this is B minor, that is three steps away from D minor. It's very close. So if I go, if I go to the transpose and I click it up one step, then now we're up to C minor, right? So now I can rename this and say, okay, this is now C minor, all right? Now, this track is in D minor right now, but if I crank it down two steps, one, two, then what does it become? It becomes C minor again. So now we have two songs in C minor. So now let's just see, <laughs> let's see what we got. Um, another thing that I have to, another thing that I have to consider is that this song, Identity Mitosis, is 142 beats per minute. This song, Euclidia, is, this song is actually 167 beats per minute. So what do I need to do? I'm going to just kind of split the difference. Uh, 152. Let's just try that, okay? So now that I've got all these tracks ready to roll um, with the proper BPM set and the pitches changed, let's go ahead and listen to them together. That's actually pretty cool, <laughs> right? So so that that's pretty rad. Um, Another thing that, that we should look at, though, is that we're not getting the highest possible quality here, okay? Uh, in, in different sections, let's go ahead and listen to this, just the Euclidea track, right? I don't know 
know if you can if you can hear that, but there's some garbly, gookily kind of sounds in there uh, that that are being played. And the reason is is because of over here, there's uh, when when audio is being stretched or manipulated in order to fit into uh, different keys or different speeds, which is essentially it's all different speeds. At the end of the day, you you are going to have these different artifacts come up uh, audibly. Uh, in this case, because we're using the beats warp mode, these are all these different warp modes that are here. Um, because we're using beats, it's trying to emphasize all the uh, transients. So what it's doing is it's repeating sections of the audio as transients, and therefore you get this kind of stuttery kind of sound. <laughs> right? So... A failsafe method when you're using a, a audio material that's that's very full, like a, a full track, is to go down to complex mode because what it does is it tries to take into account not only the transients but also the long notes. Okay, this might not be what you always want, especially if there's a, a beat section here. So, in this section, I have chose complex. Now for this one. Beats might be actually best because what I want is I want the snappiest beats possible because this is a beat. Uh, oriented part, right? So let's listen to this. There's still some garbly gook there, but the, uh, the 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 transient sound nice. Now, if I turn it to complex, listen, and back to beats. Back to complex. Hopefully you can hear that complex does not preserve the, uh, the the transients very well. They're not as bright and snappy, right? So I'm going to leave this on beats. Now that we've got these kind of uh, checked, another thing I want to show you down here is this preserve area, okay? These are just showing you different ways that they're going to be able to play the audio grains back, all right? What I can do in beats mode is I can actually just choose the forward uh, loop mode. All right. So what this means is that when the slice is finished, it will restart a new slice instead of playing that same slice backwards. It you might be confused and you're not not really sure what that means. Well, check this out. What I'm going to do is I'm I'm effectively every single one of these little uh, guys you see right here, these little things. I'm these are these are the transients. I'm effectively going to be just playing an envelope from the from the beginning of each one of these out and listen to what it does to the audio. Especially listen when I start to reduce the transient amount. Listen to this. So I'm really isolating just that beat. There's some bass line in there too. But if I pull this down a little bit, what's nice about that is I can get a lot of those snappy transients without the sustain of the song to kind of go over this, this other song that has a lot of sustain, right? So let's listen to this together. Pretty nice, huh? Sounds pretty cool. Um, so now that I've gone over that, let's go over using um, audio that has never been recorded to a click track, okay? It's just plain audio out there in space, <laughs> not uh, re recorded to any sort of click or, or any sort of metronome. It's just audio. There is also a way to get Ableton to sync up with this audio as well by manipulating the audio. So let's go ahead and, and, and I, I recorded my acoustic guitar here, okay? So I'm going to drag this into, remember, uh, you're always working in session view if you want to uh, do this trick, right? So I'm turning warp off, okay? Because Ableton's going to assume the wrong BPM with, with this anyway. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to launch a, an empty scene so it doesn't play. And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to hit warp. And I know that this is the downbeat, so I'm going to right click on here and say set 111 here and then turn warping off. Okay, we've already been through that, right? So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play this audio and I'm going to try to tap tempo along with this audio, even though I know that my tap tempoing is not going to be exactly right because this was not recorded to a click track. Okay, so I'm playing this. <laughs> So it looks like we're hovering around 90 beats per minute, okay? Um, I know I'm fast with that. I've been doing this forever. It's the only reason why. Just a little bit of practice. You can get this really quick, too. Um, I've, I've now set that to 90 as a whole number, okay? 
uh, which I, in this case, I really don't have to. I don't have to do that because this song is not going to sync perfectly to any BPM. It's just a random guitar riff, right? Um, but I put it on 90 uh, just because, I, I don't know, I'm just OCD like that. So I'm turning on warp. Okay. Now, the segment BPM is obviously going to be wrong. It's 142.83. That's definitely not right. We're going to put that on 90 because that is our assumed BPM, even though, again, this is not exactly 90, okay? So now that I've made it 90, I can go in here and I can now account for some of these, uh, you know, playing errors. You could think of them as playing errors, but just, just, just the nature of playing with no click. And, wow, <laughs> I remar I, wow, that is amazing. I remarkably stayed very close to 90 there. That, that's just, that's crazy. Anyway, uh, so what I can do is I can go in here and I can now start dragging the audio transients to fit the clock, okay? I'm actually going to physically force this audio to fit to, to fix to this 90 beats per minute, okay? So if I double click, actually, let's just go ahead and listen to this, okay? While we're, while we're following along. So you can see that, boom, that's a big note right there. Those are those are nice big indicators of downbeats. You can see them here and here. So obviously this is going to be beat three. What I can do is if I hover over this transient, again, these warp markers will show up, double click, drag it back. Now it's exactly on beat three. And what that does is it also helps some of these other warp markers get to where they're supposed to go, okay? But you can see two is still way off there. So I can dr double click on that, drag it back, okay? And right here at the beginning, I was a little uh, slow off the cuff to get to this second beat, so I can pull that back. And now we're starting to reveal something where we have kind of a workable piece. Let's, let's go ahead and listen to this along with the clock. So that's pretty good, right? Sounds, sounds pretty accurate. Uh, let's just keep going here. So I'm going to go over to number four. I'm going to drag it back. You can see those are getting pretty good. There's a couple of them that are off. And by changing one, you're changing the others. It's it's kind of, that's why they call it elastic audio, right? I'm going to move five up there. So let's just go ahead and I'm just going to say that I'm not going to go ahead and go through all this. It's just going to take too long. But let's just go up to beat five, okay? This is the section of this audio that I now want. So if I listen to this music... Sounds pretty good, right? And did you hear that error right there? See, so so this is a situation where a guitar, I chose to use a guitar because a guitar is a very familiar sound. You're very used to it. Uh, I'm going to turn this on complex because it's going to be able to uh, make the tone as well as the transients preserved as best as possible. So yet again, let's get to that error spot and see if it fixed it. Yeah, all right. So now I have this audio, and again, now that it's synced with Ableton, I can add it to my fun uh, little mashup that I'm doing here. I can first of all drag and drop this on its respective track, okay? And then I'm gonna hit to the uh, return to arrangement view. So now I need to identify yet again what, uh, what key this acoustic guitar riff is in. So I'm gonna turn on my electric. I'm just gonna solo, or I'm gonna mute these other tracks, loop this section. I'm just gonna try to figure out what key this acoustic guitar track is in. So I've just found out that is B flat minor, right? So B flat minor. Yet again, look how close we are to these other tracks. I've made this B flat minor, so now I know that B flat minor is two steps away from C minor. So all I have to do is just crank this up two steps, okay, in the transpose, and now I have an acoustic drum. <laughs> this is going to be ridiculous, probably. Let's go ahead and listen. Now, this is ridiculous, because what we had before was what? We had a situation where we were at 152 beats per minute, okay? So, the guitar is very far away. While it's not very far away in pitch, it's very far away in tempo, okay? But miraculously, the way that Ableton works, this is still going to work, okay? Uh, because it's just going to take these warp markers and consistently stretch the audio. Let's go ahead and listen now.
<laughs> That's pretty sweet. But let's say you're like, that sounds manic, bro. And it does. What we can also do is we can say, all right, well, this acoustic guitar needs to be half as fast as it is. And so the way that you do that is you are going to double its original tempo because then Ableton is what? It's going to assume that it is half as fast, okay? That might be confusing. Just know that, uh, I guess, it's, it's, it's it, suffice to say that if you click on the right-hand one, it'll make the audio twice as long. So it is now half the speed that it was before. And if you go the other way, it'll go faster. So slower, faster, right? So now, if I drag this completely out, now this clip takes up this entire section. Let's go ahead and listen to this now. Right? So now we have these three... I mean, <laughs> this was uh, hastily made and ridiculous, but um, we're basically creating a mashup, okay? Um, so if you're interested in hearing those tracks not represented in this ridiculous way, you can check out the link up here. Um, I really enjoyed making this video. I hope you enjoy making mashups, everybody, and, and syncing your audio to Ableton. Thanks for watching. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell if you want. Much love. Talk to you next time. Thanks.